hi everybody this is Pramita here and in today's video we are going to I'm going to show you how to make a window envelope um, without any kind of uh, die cutting as such and also I'm going to show you how to make this mini book without sewing with a spine and it has four pages with lots of pockets and um, you know spaces for journaling so um, yeah so i have already prepped the you know ephemera to go in so they will go in eventually and you will see the you know process so um don't skip this video if you want to watch how i made this mini book using all sorts of uh, papers and ephemera so keep watching and thank you so let's begin the process um i have sped up this video a little bit because um you know it was getting too long so for this uh, mini book project we are going to require a uh, two printer paper in the letter size or a4 size uh, preferably with the same print so that it's a little bit cohesive but it doesn't matter if you plan to have two different um you know images on two of the papers you don't need to have a double-sided paper but as in any case the back will not be seen at all so i have used this is just a template that i made uh, and um, you just need to fold the papers no measurements no scoring as such nothing is required it's a very simple idea and um, it can be tweaked to make bigger journals but in this one i'm just going to be using two sheets of paper you can make it with three or four sheets uh, but it works best with two sheets of paper uh, so this is our paper i have folded it lengthwise and then again i'm folding it widthwise so we will be getting four rectangular portions from the paper and if it bumps up at the edge then i'm going to trim this off uh, at the end so again i'm going to be folding it lengthwise and then widthwise so that we have four uh, you know sections um two from each of the sheets so these are the two section uh, sheets or portions that we have created and now we are going to align these two portions side by side uh, and personally i would prefer to go over with a zigzag stitch but to reinforce the you know space in between so because this is this will be a folded area so it will be under a little bit of um, you know uh, it needs a little bit of reinforcement so i will be using this thin strip of paper that i had in my scrap bin i will be using that as some sort of a reinforcement and i'm just going to glue this down a little bit so that it doesn't move about much when i'm sewing but you can use washi tapes or masking tapes um, in the case of washi tapes um, it is highly advisable that if it is if it doesn't stick so well use a little bit of um, glue uh, so that it holds the you know this joint better because this is going to be one of our um, not spine basically but it's just going to hold the entire booklet together so now i will have to make sure now when we're gluing this uh, side by side just keep a little bit of a gap so that it closes and opens nicely now here i have stitched the paper scrap so that it forms a mini spine sort of thing and this is an extra bit i will just take it off yeah so that's done and uh, now we have this so remember you'll have one mountain peak sort of thing and two valleys so the peak portion should be towards you and the valleys will be like you know like this so it will be like um like an m you can say when you close it so yeah so it's like that and the portion that i'm holding my left hand finger with this is going to be the spine so so now we have the booklet more or less ready and we need to uh, embellish it a little bit and create some pockets so here you can see that um 
we will be having uh, two top loading pockets and um, I will create two side loading pockets on the front and the back cover. So I'm just going to reinforce that part so that when I'm putting something in, it is going to hold up pretty well. But uh, one mistake I had done, I should have stitched these before so that, you know, it looks a little bit more cohesive. But if you are planning on doing this, then uh, and want to have that stitched look, you should stitch the papers separately and then come back and join them later. So anyways, uh, I'm going to go with the thing that I've created. So I'm just reinforcing the lip portion of the top loading pockets two of the top loading pockets because the side loading pockets i don't think will require so much and i am just using some scraps that i had um, you know thin cutting them into thin strips using them as i go and um, there will be basically three top loading pockets and two side loading pockets as it is but i will create other pockets also uh, so that it is like a mini booklet as i said um, and now i just need to um, you know uh, burnish this a little bit so that the folds are you know in you, they are flush with the sides that is the main idea and if i have any excess i don't have any excess as you can see i've folded this pretty well <laughs> Uh, for a change so if you have any kind of um, you know uh, extra paper at the sides you can just trim them off but keep the thing in uh, you know, be mindful of the fact that uh, you don't trim off the middle part because then uh, your whole booklet will fall apart so uh, these two parts you know the front cover and the back cover will have side pockets so I'll probably uh, not stitch them on the sides and um, just close up the top and the bottom and so I will be back to show you what I've done so now here I have proceeded a little bit more um, so I've created some pockets these are from Lenart studio and I want to add this scrap paper as a collage bit on the page this is going to be another pocket and here you can have some writing space and this is going to go at the back so um, I'm going to layer a bit at the back I'm going to add some papers so the thing is that uh, here I'm just trying to take off a little portion and layer this up and eventually I decide that I'm going to make this into a pocket and you'll see how it goes so this little girl is going to form a pocket at the back and um, yeah so on the front what i've done is i've printed some of the ephemera from the vintage blue christmas collection um, ephemera collection on vellum and i am i have used some double-sided tape to glue this on the cover and i'm just trying <laughs> to take this off the backing off so difficult one when you're doing things on camera um, and I just couldn't figure out you know how to take this off and just trying to it's it's pretty difficult I just need to figure out how to take this off um, I have used scissors and uh, blades and stuff like that before but anywho so um, here I'm back with more scraps <laughs> because I will be uh, showing you how I have finished this booklet. Now this lighting is a little bit weird because the previous one that you saw was um, done the previous night and um, this is in the morning. And since it's a uh, winter out here, the lighting is very, very weird and I really apologize for that. Um, and this is going to be a big pocket and I'm going to keep the right hand side empty and here I might have another pocket I and this one is another pocket so I'll show you how it how I have figured this out 
so here is going to be the spine and for the spine initially i decided that i will be using this scrap uh, fabric but um, later i thought that this might be a little um, less wide than i would prefer because i want this booklet to be secure enough uh, so that it doesn't move about and uh, while gluing the spine you have to be mindful of the fact that don't um, put glue too much so here i what i've done is i've put in some ephemera pieces now these are scrap papers from some of the pages so these are from lenart studio and um, i will show them once i have finished everything uh, so these are some scraps that i had and i decided to add them as page, you know ephemera pieces not ephemera pieces but scrap papers which can be used uh, to make journal cards of your own or um, you know whatever so uh, here i'm just going to be now is the time when i'm going to glue this um, pockets down so i'm just thinking around it i am i'm using frayed burlap because i found frayed burlap is a very um, you know it's not as dark as a uh, vintage photo or walnut stain will be i don't want this journal to look very dark and dingy um so i'm just inking it very lightly just a hint so that um you know the white part the white edge just is covered enough and it's a little bit highlighted not much um i am usually a little bit heavy handed with inking but uh, honestly i have tried uh, to stay away from inking as much as possible in this project so this is kind of how it looks and i'm really sorry about the lighting because the sun was being very temperamental and i have this you know this uh filming station working space slash area uh just beside the window so i have to be mm, you know very much reliant on the sun so i'm using just some pva glue and um this is just um now i'm trying to glue this up the edges and i'm holding this brush with a little piece of a rag because uh, the glue is um, you know settling more towards the bottom end and i want to use up that glue so i'm using this brush also because um you know that keeps my fingers glue free and i will have um, no issues of the paper sticking in my hand and fingers i really hate that <laughs> and uh, you know that that uh, messes up a lot of uh, projects also so i'm just again gluing two sides because this is a pretty large pocket and i don't want um, it to have um, glued down on three sides so i will be keeping two sides open and uh, this is how i i want to use the glue because um once you know these glue they get stuck you know they your fingers get sticky everything everything tends to stick to your fingers and that is really irksome to me i really hate that Uh, i know hate is a very strong word but i it really bugs me a lot so this is the pocket that i'm planning on having so this is pretty big and um, the right hand space can be used for uh, writing uh, you can have lots of space over here and then we will do some collage over here just to cover up that spine uh, thingy and uh, i had a piece of scrap with uh, some you know floral image just let me dig into the, my scraps again and um, so uh, here it is so i have this florally bit so i can put this somewhere here or um i actually wanted to use some labels also so i will be using some label 
uh, in conjunction with this image. So uh, first I'm going to lay this down and see how it looks and then I will decide on the label whether it's uh, suitable or not or whether we will require that at all. So uh, this is how I'm handling the glue. Yeah. Uh, because this is pretty viscous and the bottle is towards its end um, I just need to get uh, the glue out and if I just um, you know uh, what do you call it if I take out all the glue on a plate or on a different container uh, then it is going to dry up more quickly than it it usually will so that is one of the reasons why I'm not, uh, I've tried that before, uh, but it doesn't work for me. So I don't want to mess up with any more, um, um, you know, just refilling glue and stuff like that. It doesn't work for me at all. I just mess up everything. So I'm going to stick with that bottle. And um, here I'm just adding this label. Now this label is from Tsunami Rose Designs. I really love these labels. Uh, as you must be knowing by now I am a sucker for labels and um, this is uh, I think one of the best Christmas uh, labels that I have used these and the mini flashcards they are really really wonderful ephemera uh, pieces they really uh, help you to pop uh, your projects a little bit more so this is one of my highly recommended Christmas ephemera uh, pieces and here I have a little bit of extra so I'm going to take that off very carefully because I don't want to mess with the sewing and this is the back so now uh, what I did was I just added a piece of dolly on the cover now I'm going to fix the spine and uh, if you want to um, you know slow the process over here you can uh, I think I have been a little bit too quick uh, but honestly I was running out of time and I would love to do another um, project similar like similar to this uh, where I go through this spine process more in detail so I decided to ditch that blue stripped fabric sort of thing and go with this wider fabric because I felt that um, that will not hold up the spine enough uh, well enough you know it was too narrow so now the thing is that we are going to apply glue on the edge of that um, front cover and um, just so if you have Fabri-Tac it's not an issue at all since I do not use Fabri-Tac I use a very strong PVA glue um, it works well but it takes a little bit of time to dry you have to give that much so here I'm just adding my fabric to the side of the you know the spine side of the front cover and then uh, I'm just taking off the extra nothing nothing special so I'm just going to turn this book over and then I'm going to glue on the now be mindful of the fact don't glue on the top part of the spine if the glue seeps through the crest of the pages on the spine, this book will not open. So you have to glue only on the edges of the front and the back covers. You can add as many pages you want, but um, you have to be careful of adding glue only to the edges, not towards the crest. If the glue seeps towards the crest, then your book will not open so this is how your book is looking now it's pretty wet and i'm just going to give this some try time to dry so i'm just going to use some you know the sewing machine clips that i have i'm just going to clip them down for a while while we work on the window uh, envelope uh, i'll show you how you can do that without any kind of dyes uh, because people do use dyes if you have them if you want to use them go ahead not a big deal but 
some of us do not have um, you know die cutting machine because they are pretty expensive and also um, it, it is a big machine and you have to bring it out and cut it's it's a cumbersome process so if you want to do it a very quick project you can do that uh, so i will be showing that also now i'm going to let this dry and um, you know come back to it later on so in the meantime we're going to work in this uh, on this envelope now what i did in this envelope was this is a paper from lenard studio and i've just drawn a circle and uh, with a pencil i will show you how to make this and you can use any template you can use a uh, you know glass tumbler uh, as um, you know something that you want to draw with i have used uh, this um, masking tape uh, circle and i have just drawn around it and then i'm going to cut it out so that's it and now i just need to um, you know cut around that circle once it has been pierced in you can even punch a hole and then cut around it whatever but i like to go over with either a box cutter or a um, you know paper cutter knife or blade or whatever um, and then i'm going to cut around that circle so this is going to be a little bit tedious process uh, so if you want to um you know i these were some of the reasons why the video got so long and i had to uh, you know uh, make it a little bit uh, shorter by making it uh, you know speeding up the process a little bit uh, because uh, i don't want you to <laughs> watch this mindless cutting around and anybody can do it it's not a rocket science so and i don't claim to have invented that also many people have done it you can do a rectangular window also you can draw it out you can use your credit card uh, to you know older credit cards that you use to smoothen papers out or after gluing stuff you can make a take an outline of that and uh, cut it out and make a window so here we have um the window and i'm going to cover this up with a piece of vellum um, you can use clear packaging also or if you have um, clear acetate you can use that but i want to soften things up so i'm using this vellum piece and i also had this as a scrap uh, so i'm going to use that and then i'm going to um, first i'm going to use my pva glue around the circle and then i'm going to place the vellum so that i know how much i need and then cut around it or cut accordingly so now i'm just adding the pv glue this is just to make sure that when i stitch around the circle it doesn't move about too much okay and um, and it is secured properly uh, because uh, vellum or tracing paper or packaging or acetate whatever it tends to shift a lot you know while sewing so um, it is preferable that you uh, put a little bit of glue just to hold this together um, and then if you want to stitch you can go around it so this is how it's looking so now um, i just had a dab of glue there and just need to take that off and uh, another reason why i uh, often have to do voiceover uh, is that there's so much of noise around where i film um, it is difficult to uh, hear me while you know a constant music is being played um played at a very loud uh, you know very loudly as you can see uh, so uh, i often tend to uh, do a voice over these days so this is how the envelope is going to be flipped into the journal so uh, we will do a entire setup uh, in another video and that's going to be coming probably tomorrow and it's going to be a bit lengthy um, and I don't want to do a voiceover for that because then it's 
it becomes difficult so i will stitch around this eventually but for now i will first want to ink around the edges and then do a little bit of collage also uh, so let's see how things go so now i'm just thinking around these edges and um, i have nearly finished everything required for this uh, keepsake journal now what we have to do is um, you know put this together and as i said um, i'm going to be posting um, the video on christmas eve or uh, probably on christmas day if you're busy you that's totally understandable uh, you can watch this later you can do it with any other kind of uh, journal that you want to create and these are just simple ideas um, i do not want like to use too much of complicated ideas but even if i do i tweak it to make it as simple as possible for the you know process that i generally show so uh, so that it's understandable and doable for everybody uh, maybe because that's uh, the teacher in me you know things like make things simple so that the uh, people who want to learn this uh, will be more drawn towards it so um, yeah so i've finished that and this is the journal card i want to put inside um, so i will just need to back that up with some paper and um, also i will be layering a little bit on the blank space that we have so this is again the blue vintage uh, christmas ephemera pack uh, that i've printed on vellum and that is a scrap that i have from uh, lenart studio you know papers and um, i probably will might use that or and these are some labels you know i was playing with some digitals like i was creating some and i created this digital on the you know this background paper that is already available in my shop i have just layered that uh, on the label and this is a squarish kind of label and um, i don't know whether i will be ever listing things like this in my shop or not uh, if anybody is interested then probably i will but uh, that needs to be seen um, i it is in the pipeline but i really have so little time that um, i need to uh, find some time to work on the digitals these days uh, and i will be also showing you uh, what i am crafting on right after this christmas um, journal has been completed so i have been working some on some projects which are half finished which needs a little bit of tlc and get them readied up uh, for my shop and there is again going to be um, a kind of restock of physical journals i am currently not uh, you know listing too much of digitals but that's because i'm busy working on some physical items and um, there will be a restock in the month of january hopefully uh, because you know my dental work had taken a lot of time and it had really thrown a spanner in all kinds of plans that i had um, that really bugs me anyways so um, i will be using this um, image from uh the vintage uh, blue vintage christmas uh, kit that i have and these are just you know supplementary ephemera if you want to go with the more traditional ones with tags and um uh journal cards and stuff like that it's not actually like that it's a very um, organic kind of journal uh, that i personally would want to not a very cohesive one because then you won't be have uh, able to put in your own personal bits and pieces um you know like your own ephemera mem memorabilia your own um items that you will be creating uh, during the christmas season so there should be enough space for that also 
and then you will have a unique journal you know you you can call it your own so that is why this is just a mini small um, kit sort of thing as i always said that you will be requiring additional uh, stuff which you can have from so many other gorgeous kits that are available and i'm going to be just using this so I've just taken off the sides uh, just to make it a little bit smaller and also i'm going to layer this with a little bit of label so um, you know the square labels that i've cut i will put them at a height and it's looking good so i want this also but it is too big so i'm going to be using again one of the labels from tsunami rose designs and i will just add it as an extra thing because um, uh, i when i'm layering things i don't like to put too many of too many items um i like to stick with three or four at the most because i think the placement is um, very important uh, it's how you look at the things um, is more important than the number of things you have it's um, it's my take you can add fibers you can add lace you can add more ephemera you can add more bling whatever but it's the placement that is uh, most important because that is what is going to catch your eye first um, i have learned this through many trial and error methods and trust me uh, the simple the better and uh, um, again as i said uh, the placement is the key you don't need to put a ton of things it's just three items that i'm using in this and probably later on i'll be adding a little bit of lace that's it but uh, i don't count that as a part of the collage uh, process uh, but it's the only three things that i'm going to be using some vellum image which is going to be the focal part and some labels some blank and some words just to give it a pop and also a height see um i have said that before if you place things at uneven heights uh, your eyes tend to gravitate and like uh, more think you know things like that so i'm just using some pva glue and that probably was not a very wise idea but somehow i managed to pull this off and i just push this with my fingers just to minimize the creases and trust me uh, eventually it smoothened out and it worked out so well when you will see the finished product it, that's that was the main idea and even though it has creased up a little bit once it dried because when i'm doing the voiceover uh, it has already dried and there is not a single uh, crease there and i'm so super happy with it uh, because that was bugging me a lot initially but eventually you know it worked out fine so yeah so i'm going to place this round label stick uh, you know around there and as i said probably i will go back and add a little bit of um, lace later on when i'm finishing this off so uh, that's going to be there and then um there will be uh, so this is where it's going to be that's it so i just want this to be like simple and uh, at different heights so uh this is basically done now i just need to uh, you know take off the, now i'm going to let that dry and take off the you know clips from the mini book and you will see how easily you can put together a small project or small book it can be made into an ephemera holder also you can stuff things in and then um you know give it some give it to someone as a gift uh you can make it into a gift card holder whatever but for now this is just a mini book or a mini booklet so i have these ephemera those which would go in uh 
the top loading pockets so there are actually three top loading pockets that can be um, used but uh, I'm going to be using only the two of these yeah the other one has uh, you know it opens up at the bottom also unless I decide to glue it uh, so I'm not if I want to make it into a pocket, I'll have to glue the bottom part. So here is another one. And I have all the ephemera ready to go inside the journal. Uh, all stitched up. And I just need to assemble the journal now. So we have added all those extra bits that um, you know I was planning on. So I will go through the ephemera when I am you know ready to put this journal together which is absolutely ready and now i just need to put these in so you can see how everything has turned up and the next video is going to be the setup video where i talk you through the entire process of putting this together so don't skip that part um i'll be back to show you how this looks and we'll do it on camera so if i fail if i make a mistake then it will be recorded so i made some scrap pads um uh, to be tucked in envelopes mini booklets and all sorts of things a uh, very interesting ones very simple because uh, for me simplicity is the key and um, if you do it well then um, you know it works out best so thank you everybody have a very merry christmas and thank you for staying with me i welcome i'm sorry that i'm doing this towards the end i welcome all my new subscribers and welcome back my older ones i will stitch around this and be back so i just want to smoothen out the creases a little bit uh, so so that there's a little bit of a uh, little less of bumping up and i'm going to be adding this journal card i need to back this off uh, with some paper so that's it there was a you know do, uh, someone at the door so i had to pause this voiceover too it is life is a little bit hectic right now but that's no excuse and um, so here it is uh, thank you again for watching this and we'll put this together um, in the next video so this is my christmas work basket so thank you everybody have a very merry christmas